Come on, man. God, bro. You had that the whole time, you bastard. This man gets me. Somewhere rather than the Indians for the bell, carve up the hill. I have never heard anything like this before. I actually don't even know where
<laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, that was, any thoughts? It <laughs> was so weird. Well, there was there was moments that I liked that yeah. were like there was a section in the middle that just like was a good like groove break and it had like good guitar. Yeah, guitar solo. And the beginning like was like that, but then yeah. like it soon like started in all these wacky sound effects and and weird beats and syncopations and like just Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much Frank Zappa, I think. You know, um, <clears throat> I never thought that uh, Frank Zappa could still surprise me, even though we've only listened to maybe like, what, five or six different songs so far? Probably not even that, maybe even like four songs. But what the hell, dude? People telling me he never did drugs against drugs. Come on, dude. He had to have at least done one drug to come up with something like this. Somebody in the band had to have come up with this during some kind of drug binge. And I'm sorry. It's okay. You're perfectly capable of coming up with this stuff sober, right? But like, why would you? What the hell am I listening to? On roof. On roof. That's roof. What the hell was I? Yo, that was a trip. That was a trip. Um, I can't even try to make sense of it. I can't. <sighs> that was crazy. But it was the most satisfying song I've ever heard. Probably the most satisfying. Um, wow. Wow. That was an experience. That was definitely one for the books right there. Um insane insane i mean it was so many layers to that it was so many layers to that the bass was incredible the drums were kicking ass that guitar little guitar solo he had in the middle of the song was gorgeous he was low i mean he started off um kind of slow i guess not slow really but he was just playing at first then he just it just like shot up into this crazy ass performance dude like insane at the beginning it was like some spaceships galactic shit yo man and i just blazed one this was incredible man thank you for this On roof. On roof. <laughs> dude that's oh. um all right so avant-garde that was avant-garde for sure very jazzy. So out there in such a different way than what we've heard previously. It's true. Funny enough, I I do listen to some modern <clears throat> jazz. So yeah. some bigger ones like Snarky Puppies. Um, there's an Israeli jazz group called the Vasai Cohen Trio who are phenomenal. They're like my go-to study music. So for anybody needing to study, like it literally is my – I go to it like – this album gently disturbed every single time. That's what I do if I'm like needing to get in the zone and do crazy math equations. Like that's it. And True stuff. Listening to him felt very much like he was a forefather to a lot of that sort of stuff. That very like the modern jazz scene, it seems like, was very much influenced by if not this song in particular, at least him His style and as like a things whole. that he's done. Yeah. Um or even Jacob Collier, uh, some of the vocals stylings in it sounded a lot like him so these are just some like modern people that i can relate back to him as like people who clearly yeah. took inspiration um even kendrick lamar that the yeah. he had a so these are all sort of not in the rock realm but uh he had a really big record around like i think like 2016 called to pimp a butterfly that seems like it borrowed heavily from this like everything from the guitar tone to like some of the bass stuff uh the rhythm tracks yeah, I thought it was really, really awesome. It was a really awesome track. That shit was crazy, dude. Yeah. It, like, there was a point where I wasn't even trying to bob or 
get in the groove. I was kind of just like sitting there and like letting it have its way with me, you know? Yeah. It was awesome though. Like it took me on so many different paths that I didn't expect to go. Like it had me down like balls deep in one path. And then out of nowhere, it pulls you out with some like yeah. just funky moment. And then it kind of throws you down another path and all these different just layering elements that they utilize to craft these different paths were just crazy. And the the yeah. rhythm section itself, just dude, the bass, the bassist and the drummer alone. Whoa, insane. Dude, literally just like crafted the path, the so foundation. I, I think uh I had read in the comments that he is like considered like or maybe you said it, it was mm -hmm. like one like one of the last really great composers, I guess, in this sort of field. And that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like compositional work. So I don't know if Frank Zappa played in the band itself. I think I read that he did guitar work. Like, I think he was the guitarist in this, but don't quote me. I'm sure okay. they'll let us know at this point. Either way, it seemed like he either had maybe like a rotation of different players, like different drummers, different bass players, singers, or... Like session musicians and stuff? It sounds like session musicians. It sounds like people that you called like a... It seems like you called like some fucking crazy jazz players... And he were like, here is the music that I wrote. Uh, back me up in this. So I don't know if he had like a long-term, yeah. like, hey, this is actually just my band. Or my, <clears throat> my, my first thought is that he just was like, I'm a great composer. I'm going to call you guys to like, here are a bunch of friends that I've worked with in the past or people I know that are great. Like, come do this with me. Yeah. So, Definitely comment uh, below and let us know, like, what is Frank Zappa? What is his deal? Like, what? Yeah, I'm explain. I think we're you know? both a little awestruck by it. It's not a song that meets you halfway. Like this this requires you to put on a lot of work to appreciate, appreciate it. everything that he's yeah. doing. Like what a couple of things like one of the things I was thinking through the song at multiple points was this song needs a good like 9 to 20 listens. Yeah. Just in general so that like you can attempt to expect what's coming next so that you're ready for it the turn that he's going to take you on yeah um it wasn't a bad thing it was just like no it's just it's it there was, are there are some bands and some songs that that like uh like i think born in the bayou right mm -hmm. weird to relate these two songs because they're not really Wait, but polar opposites <laughs> polar opposites in the way of born in the bayou is a song that really does you don't have all to, the work for you. it does all the work for you and it's not a bad thing it's like that's super necessary yeah. sometimes and super what you want this is a song that's the total opposite where it's like hey listen we did some fucking crazy art here if you want to appreciate it you're gonna have to put in as much effort as we put in to make it like At least we're not gonna a good fraction like we're not gonna hold your hand to do this you're gonna have to like dive in like face first like go yeah. into it uh yeah. rating i don't i don't know yet i'm still talking dude i have a lot to say all right what do you do i loved the like the breakdown region that happened around i want to say not yeah the halfway point but like the 42 percent mark ish where it kind of settled down, everything pulled back, and then the guitar came in. Yeah. Super creamy, super just smooth tone at first. And then he totally just like... The wah effect. Oh, yeah. He, and he so totally gnarly. developed his own, like his style. Because he came across like he was going to be playing a certain way. And it just wasn't he, even all. the note choice and the, the tonality of it, he made it appear as though he was going to continue playing that way, you yeah. know? And then as it progressed and developed, he like built upon his own like ideas and just kept building it up. I just yeah. feel like this inspired sure. so many just like different feelings, you know. Like if mm -hmm. you just if you don't like overanalyze too much and kind of just like sit back and listen to it, like just the the note choices and the tonalities and the, like the rhythms themselves kind of like just make you feel certain feelings at different points in the song. Definitely, definitely a cool song. Okay, uh, what's your rating? <laughs> what's my rating? Yeah, bring the question back. <laughs> I think, on oh oh, we're doing the new grading system. Oh, grading. Okay, grading yeah. system. All right, that makes it a little easier. I think this is an A tier song. A tier? I think, think so? so. I think so. I don't know like it's it is very different. Is it my favorite song we've done on the channel? No. Is mm -hmm. it one that I really respect for what it is? Like I mean this is obviously a very progressive jazz inspired track. And it's pushing boundaries in a lot of ways that are like non-conforming to the normal sensibilities of what was going on yeah, then. Like, and that doesn't go on, on the now. radio, really. No. I mean, I'm sure no, somebody it, aired it, but not like a maybe. lot. <laughs> you know maybe. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's so, tough. For, for the most of people, if you hear that out of nowhere, you're like you're going to be like, I don't know if I want that. In fact, I'm yeah. pretty sure I don't. Yeah, but people. if you're seeking out that sort of thing, 
I thought it was really cool. So as yeah. a fan of, again, and these are just modern artists that I like that did a similar style of this, like Snarky Puppies or the Kendrick Lamar album uh, that have this this sort of element to them. I, I think it's really, really good. I'm going to give it A tier as well. I want to give it S tier, but like, uh, maybe over many listens I'll change, but there were certain moments where I was feeling a certain mood, and it's okay to pull me out of the sauce. It's okay yeah. to go, okay, you've had enough of this sauce, I'm going to put you in this sauce. But sometimes the way they dragged me into the other sauce was a little, not like abrupt. Chaotic, maybe? Yes. Like some of the vocal things, I don't want to, cheesy is not the right word, but like it relative to the intense depth and just all of everything that's happening with certain sections, and then you kind of, yeah. you pull back with some like in-your-face vocal work. I'm kind of like okay, like I was in, I was swimming in the sauce, you know, if that makes sense. So that's the reason I'm gonna give it A tier. But I'm a hundred percent positive that he has S tier work of the same like style. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I also. I don't know if that makes any sense, guys. I also think uh, we haven't been exposed to enough of this stylistic. Yeah, I feel like I don't have the credentials to yeah. like put this in a tier, but I'll, I'll say A tier anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, anyways, uh, great song. Um, let us know if we should do more of him, if we should, uh, what songs we should do next, if that's the case, and what your thoughts were. This is a really weird track. Yeah, so I'm, sure, I'm sure not all of you guys have heard of this. I'm sure like some of you have, but I'm sure there's plenty of A&A people here who like, like oh, A&A posted a new video. Let's watch the video. And yeah. It's like they haven't heard it, but it's like, yeah, so let us know your thoughts as well. Yeah, so comment down below. Uh, we'll be down there reading them because this is one that, I really am interested to see what, what the general populace thinks of this sort of stuff. Boom. That being said, we'll see you in the next video.